attention. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. Tonight is somewhat of a special evening. It's the last board meeting for our board member, Jimmy Lodato. I should say that it's uh, 6.01, I'm calling the school board meeting to order. And now I want to say that this will be your last board meeting. We appreciate you being here. We'll get more to that. But because it is, we tonight we have two schools here. We have Nature Coast and Moton Elementary. For the first time in history, we will have from kindergarten to 12th grade doing the Pledge of Allegiance for you. And not only that, because you're from Ybor City, yes. after the pledge, we're gonna have it done in Spanish by two girls. Whoa! Oh. So, can they do it? In it's a celebrating <laughs> Spanish. Yeah. Do it in Sicilian, they do Spanish. Can we do Sicilian? Okay. You could do it in. I can do it now. Okay. <laughs> this is all recognition of Spanish month. Oh, Spanish yeah. month. Yeah. With that, please a reflection. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Would you would you stand up, please? Tonight for a prayer, I'm going to say a few things if I can. Uh, we usually go with reflections, but you know how much I love prayers. And so I'm going to make this my last prayer, if you could just bear with me. Lord, this is my last prayer as a school board member. Ten years ago, you placed me on a mission which has become both a burden and a blessing. Against great challenges, I have completed all that you have asked. Please protect and preserve all the worthy projects that we have created with your blessings. Please protect our school districts, our teachers, which are under constant attack from evildoers. Protect our citizens from false Christians, and you know who they are, Lord. Protect our board members, superintendent, district employees, our teachers, our SROs who protect our kids, our bus drivers, food service, custodians. I, wanna, I want you to protect everyone from the top to the bottom. Please protect and bless all our children and their families. You have released me, Father, from my obligation, and for that I am thankful. You have blessed me with the greatest gift, my wife Tammy. Now that you have given me the time for us to spend enjoying the rest of our lives together, I will be forever grateful. In the name of our Lord, which we say, amen. amen. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. You may be seated. So thank you, thank you very much, and uh, muy bueno on that. Uh, uh, I would like to thank all of our parents, staff I see out here, friends and family that have joined each of these uh, students up here, whether it be from Moton or from Nature Coast, thank you for coming out tonight and supporting them and coming here. I will tell you, this is by far the best time of this Tuesday board day that we could possibly spend is when our kids are up here giving this pledge. So we really appreciate that. <clears throat> now, before you go, uh, I would like, starting with Moton uh, Elementary students, I, if you would just please state your name and which grade you're in. Do we have that microphone? <laughs> and we're going to work our way right through Nature Coast too, Shark. So you're next. You're on the, on the line next. Go ahead. My name is Linda Little, and I'm in the fifth grade. 
My name is Cora Corn and I and I am in fifth grade. My name is Julie Soren and I am in fifth grade. My name is Johnny Thomas and I am in the fifth grade. My name is Trenton Brown and I am in the fifth grade. My name is Nicholas McKenzie and I am in fifth grade. My name is Kathy Hernandez and I am in the fifth grade. My name is Jayla Carver and I am in the fifth grade. My name is Jay Lewis and I am in fifth grade. My name is Melanie Puckett and I am a senior. My name is Chloe Krug and I'm a senior. My name is Ashlyn Sensing and I'm a senior. <laughs> My name is Diana Capodessa and I'm a senior. My name is Ashley Bauerfein and I am a senior. My name is Mariah King and I'm a freshman. My name is Gabrielle Sirs and I'm a senior. My name is Isabella Castillo and I'm a junior. My name is Hannah Shortino and I'm a junior. My name is Autumn Cooper and I'm a junior. My name is Madeline Troy and I'm a junior. My name is Ava Unatella and I'm a junior. My name is Emily Hinton and I'm a junior. My name is Madison Pinnell and I'm a senior. <laughs> My name is Sky Brossick and I'm a sophomore. My name is Madeline Davis and I'm a junior. My name is Jada Greer and I'm a sophomore. My name is Mariana Felita and I'm a sophomore. And my name is Gianna McCollum and I'm a junior. My name is Kendall Colas and I'm a sophomore. My name is Ellis Aliana and I'm a sophomore. My name is Ava Sepulveda and I'm a sophomore. My name is Tiffany Nagel and I'm a senior. My name is Cortland Bernard and I'm a junior. Wow, I think that's the most we've ever had. Yeah. So. So thank you again, students. Thank you again, parents, family, friends. Uh, students, I'm sure you need to go home now and study because I'm not going to tell you who, but a few of your teachers got some pop quizzes for you tomorrow. So be ready, all right? <laughs> thank you again, guys. See. Well, it's obvious most of the people didn't come here to see us. <laughs> okay, that was beautiful. I need an approval of the agenda for October 25th, 2022. May I have a motion? And a second. Please vote. Passes 5 0. Gina, it's your show. All right, so tonight I want to talk about some fun events we have coming up in our schools, uh, along with um, recapping some events we had in the past weeks. So starting off, uh, Choka Chatty Elementary is currently participating in the peanut butter challenge, along with 4-H. Students and staff are being asked to donate jars of peanut butter during the month of October to help combat hunger. They'll also be celebrating their annual Monster Mash dance on October 31st. Chug Chai would like to invite any veterans in our community, as well as the school board, to attend their annual Veterans Day show on November 9th at 6 p.m. They would also like to invite the board to attend the Crime Stopper pinning ceremony on November 8th. Hernando High has their homecoming dance this Saturday with their parade and football game on Friday. 
Schools throughout Hernando County are participating in Red Ribbon Week this week in support of living drug free. To recap some of our past events, Central celebrated their homecoming two weeks ago and also had students come over from Pine Grove Elementary to trick or treat with the high schoolers. <laughs> Wikiwachi had their homecoming last Saturday and their parade during the week, which is great because they're able to include students from Winding Waters to come over and watch. Nature Coast also had our homecoming last Saturday along with our annual class games and the wave during the week. <laughs> I would also like to talk about an event that went on today. Uh, so the teen chapter of Leadership Hernando, which had an event today where they had the opportunity to visit Wikiwachi High, Central High, and PHSC to learn about leaders and programs within our schools. For those of you who don't know what this program is, it is out of uh, the Greater Hernando County Chamber of Commerce, and six students from four of our middle schools are chosen to represent their schools and learn about our community and its leadership opportunities. This is a great way to help our students grow as future leaders. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Next item is presentation 230973, recognition of October Hernando County School District veteran. Good evening, Superintendent and Board Chair and Board Members. Several weeks ago, you may recall, the school board identified an opportunity and made a recommendation to find a way to shine a light on our current Hernando School District staff who formerly served in the armed forces or those who continue to serve as reservists. So in support of the board's suggestion, the communications team developed a plan to embed a recurring feature of staff veterans each month. Tonight marks the first of what will be many opportunities to introduce them, recognize them for their service, to their country and to acknowledge their ongoing service to the students of our school district. And at this time, I would like to welcome Challenger K-8 principal, Ms. Rosemarie Mayorini, who is here to introduce Mr. Chris King. Thank you. Mr. King has served over 11 years in the active Army, the Florida Army National Guard, and the U.S. Army Reserve. He was an enlisted in infantryman before earning a commission as an infantry officer in 1993. He has patrolled the West German and Czechoslovakian border during the Cold War. He has participated in human, human, I practice this, I promise, humanitarian, <laughs> humanitarian missions in South Florida during Hurricane Andrew and in countries abroad. Ultimately, during his third combat tour in Iraq, Mr. King made the decision to become a teacher. He is currently serving in his 17th year as a teacher in Hernando County. He represented CK8 as our Teacher of the Year for the 2018 and 19 school year. Mr. King has been an integral part of our school safety team, and we are grateful that he is part of our Navigator family. And Mr. King also provided us a little a little uh, artifact from his time in service. If you'd like to look at the screens, look look at that look at that promise in that young man's eyes. <laughs> Mr. King, please come on up and let us honor you, sir. This is very embarrassing, but. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Any recognition of veteran service would be incomplete without honoring. Sorry the service of our military families and spouses who make that service possible. They support us during, before, during, and for years following our deployments. For me personally, my son Chris has been my rock. My daughter Mary has been my counsel and conscience. And my wife Jackie has been there for years, enduring separation and fear. She has done so with grace, and for that, I say thank you very much, and I love you all. Thank you.
By the way, I wanted to thank the board and Superintendent Stratton, but I couldn't get through. We're fine. We're fine. Don't worry about us. Sorry, go buy dinner tonight. <laughs> I think Chris and I started in this district in 2005, Chris, together as yes, challenger. Wow. Uh, he yeah. was obviously a leader. You can see right away. I believe that was a good hire that year when I hired Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the next person I'd like to invite up to the podium would be Sophia Watson. Yeah, keep these in your drawer. They say veterans on them. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> I'm Sophia Watson, director of Simpson Tech. Um, had to come out tonight and give a special thank you on behalf of Simpson Tech to Jimmy. Um, Simpson Tech is here because of you. It's your baby. Um, and we want to just present to you with a little something uh, in recognition of your steadfast dedication to all of workforce development in Hernando County. We wouldn't have moved this far ahead if it wasn't because of you. Um, so we want to thank you. Thank you. Get in the picture. Get in the picture. Get in the picture. I was going to say, I feel like Tina should be here. I feel like my staff that's here should be here. Next item is number 423-1033, approved proclamation number P23-002, Hernando County Schools Bullying Prevention Act of Kindness Week, November 14th to the 18th of 2022. Jill. Good evening, school board chair, school board members, Mr. Stratton. My name is Jill Colasa. I'm director of student services. And I just want to thank you for giving me a few minutes tonight to read the proclamation. Um, tonight is the Hernando County Schools Bully and Prevention Acts of Kindness Week, November 14th through 18th, 2022. Whereas it is important that Hernando students be protected from bullying and harassment and its tragedies and recognize that bullying and harassment are a form of violence with lifelong effects as we acknowledge that a safe, physical, and emotional environment is a significant goal and a personal right of each individual. And whereas, as we acknowledge that there are many incidents of depression, poor self-esteem, anxiety, aggression, self-destructive behaviors, and violent acts that children resort to in defense of bullying and harassment. And whereas excellence in education is dependent on safe, secure, and peaceful school settings. And whereas all parents, students, teachers, and especially those leaders in education, healthcare, law enforcement, government, and business need to collaborate with each other to focus public attention on this important issue of school safety and work to change the social climate and social norms in regards to bullying. And whereas bullying and harassment are learned behaviors and occur in more environments than just school, and whereas individuals and communities have the responsibility, the power, and knowledge of the resources available to stop bullying and harassment in its tracks, and whereas heightening awareness and helping each other to recognize and respond effectively to bullying and harassing behavior will promote respect, 
and safety within our learning environment and beyond into our family community. Be it resolved and proclaimed, our schools are committed to bullying and harassment prevention and officially designated November 14th through 18th, 2022 as Hernando County Schools Bullying Prevention Acts of Kindness Week. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is the approval of the minutes. Oh, we need to vote on that. Does anybody dare not to vote? <laughs> I need a second. Five zero. Thank you. Now the approval of the minutes from the informal workshop, student expulsion, and regular meetings of 10-11-22. Need a motion? Second. And a vote. Passes 5-0. Public hearing items. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the public hearing and final approval of the NEOLA policy updates, volume 22, number two, special update, May 2022, and volume 23, number one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing, so if there's anyone who's present that wants to be heard on this proposition, now would be the time to come forward. Mr. Chair, let the record reflect that no one approaches the podium. Thank you. I need a motion and a second. Please vote. Passes 5-0. Citizens input, green sheets. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the opportunity for the public to be heard on items appearing for action on the meeting agenda tonight. Copies of the agenda are available at the entrances to the boardroom. To speak at this time, you should have already completed a green citizen's input speaker form identifying the specific topic that you wish to uh, discuss. <coughs> Speakers wishing to address general matters not on the agenda this evening should complete a pink citizen's input speaker form and they'll have the opportunity to speak later in the meeting. If you have any materials that you wish to share with the board, please provide them to the board secretary prior to speaking. Each speaker has a total of three minutes to address the board um, and the remaining time is displayed in two monitors on the sides of the building. <coughs> it, speakers will be called to come forward by the chair. Prior to making your remarks, please state your name and address for the record. All speakers and comments are subject to applicable school board bylaws and policies, including those requiring appropriate decorum and civility. All statements should be directed to the presiding officer and no person may question or address board members individually. Staff members should not be expected to answer questions from the audience unless called upon to do so by the board chair or superintendent. Thank you. First speaker is Carla. When you finish, would you f finish filling this out? Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Carla Johns, Brooksville, Florida. I want to say I saw the proclamation on the agenda packet the other day, and I am over the moon excited that it is finally being implemented. For four and a half years, I have stood up here fighting for my child. It's been mainly one, being bullied. I think that a lot of parents need to understand that we are not perfect. There is not one perfect parent in this world. And if your child is the one who is being the bully and you're not made aware of it, be open-minded and don't think that your little darling is perfect all the time. Also, I think that it needs to be focused on reaction. When there are situations where a child finally reacts and no one understands or even knows that he's being bullied or she, stop focusing on the reaction and let's get you down to the core problem of what caused that reaction as part as the bullying investigations go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carla, you want to take this? And then just give it to, back to her. Thank you. Lisa Misario. Good evening. Lisa Misario, Burbank Drive, Brooksville. 
Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you, um, say thank you to our bargaining core team and our bargaining committee members and recognize them. Susan Jackson, who's my co-chair, Dana, Dana Blazik, Patty Greenwood, Jason Daly, and our bargaining committee members, Amy Ernest, Nicole Whitman, Ethan Grief, Dustin Kupchik, Jackie Cross, and Casey Tobias. The work that we do at the bargaining table is volunteer work, basically, working on behalf of other teachers. And those people have dedicated themselves, some of them extra time, to do research for our team and, and to help us be prepared when we come to the table. So um, I, I wanted to just highlight some of the things that are in our um, our agreement for this evening, we took a lot of extra research legwork and time to bring something forward for athletic supplements, and I know our coaches will appreciate that. It's been long overdue, the improvements for coaching supplements. Um, raises that do not create further compression in our salaries, which is really important, and I think that those those were issues that I think both sides were really in agreement on, trying to get done and trying to accomplish. And then insurance increases that did not take away from our raises. So the fact that that was absorbed was greatly appreciated. I wanted to say thank you to the district team and the superintendent and the school board for making investments in our people. At my first meeting as HCTA president, I said to Mr. Stratton, I said at the board meeting, I was looking forward to working with Mr. Stratton and his team to make this district one of the best places to work in the Tampa Bay area. We are committed to that. And salaries are just a part of it. So what I feel I'm compelled to do in this moment is to point out that this is union work. So all the times that you see people trying to put a negative spin on teachers unions and trying to bash teachers unions, remember that this is union work. So negotiating contracts, working with district leadership to improve salaries, benefits, working conditions, which we never forget, are also our students learning conditions. This is our work and this is what we do. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the end of citizens' input. Now we have the adoption of the consent agenda. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Okay. Sure, no problem. Susan, you pulling anything? What? Are you pulling anything? <laughs> no, I, I'm not pulling any items. I had, if I had questions, they've been answered. Okay. And one was just answered. Okay. No, I'm not pulling any items. Okay. Thank you for asking. You're welcome, Jimmy. Now, Gus, you know that you go board out meeting would not be a board meeting if I didn't pull a few products, That's right? right? A few items. Yeah, I'm ready for you. So, yes, so let's go ahead and pull number nine and number 18, please. Uh, Linda? I have none. Okay. Can I have a motion to accept the consent agenda with number nine, number 18 being pulled? Need a second? One of those new laptops that were given to all the students? <laughs> okay, vote. Pass 5 0. Okay, number nine. Ratify changes to the contract between Hernando United School Workers, H U S W. I hear you. Louder, louder. Hamilton has a problem with his ears. Oh, he has a problem. <laughs> Continue. I'm done. Hello, Lisa. Mr. Lodato. Lisa, you, you know I had to bring you up. Yes. Because I always appreciate all the answers you give me. And the reason I wanted you to come up here is to explain 
the contract as far as with the uh, signing uh, bonuses for the mechanics. Are they certified mechanics that you're going to be hiring? Yes. Okay, and the cost of that would be what? Could you just kind of go a little over, just a little overview? Sure. So um, we started out this year, we ended last year actually with a shortage of uh, bus mechanics, as you well know. And um, we had a daunting task at the beginning of the year to bargain raises for our um, non-instructional bargaining unit based on some new legislation. And, and that put a huge strain on our financial um, or dollars so we we had to get everybody to $15 an hour and at the same time there's always opportunities to talk about other positions but the biggest need was was that and so that was where our focus was um, knowing and understanding that we also had a shortage in bus drivers and a shortage in mechanics and there are a lot of positions in the district that um, we have lost to the private sector because of pay um, with with the money that we invested in the non-instructional, which is about $4 million, um, it, it has created an influx of new employees in certain areas. Um, we have seen an increase in bus drivers, we have seen an increase in pairs and some other positions, but we were still lacking in the vehicle mechanic area. And um, with that, we were, we were pulling buses off the road at, at an, a rate that we weren't able to keep maintaining them to put them back on the road. Uh, and when we don't have buses on the road, enough buses for our routes, we can't get kids to school. So we knew that was an emergency. We needed to come together and find a solution that could help us immediately. Um, and then we'll continue to bargain at the table for long, long standing solution, but we needed something quick um, to, to get us through this desperate period. And so we had some funds available, non-recurring funds through our ESSER money that was slated for bonuses, not yes. necessarily this type of bonus, but for salaries and bonuses. So um, we did have to amend that grant to cover this this type of bonus, and we're in the process of doing that. But that, that was the only way to spend that money, so we can't use it for anything else. So we came to the table with the union. They brought it to the table and, and we talked about it and we all agreed that that was the best thing to do to provide a solution for this issue that we had. And I'll let Ralph talk about this too because he lived it every day. Oh, yes. And um, it, we have filled all but two, oh. all but two. So that's six, six new. Right, so, yeah, at a, at a cost of 20000 and so it's 120000 so far, we have two more that we'd like to fill. We have one in uh, the process we're reviewing for credentials, um, and they do have to be uh, certified in that area, so we're definitely hiring um, um, experienced mechanics. And um, because of that, we are keeping our buses on the road, we're getting kids to school, and even at this level, because you know we have an aging fleet, they're still working overtime, they're still working nights and weekends um, to get the job done, but, but it's getting done. Well. Um, <clears throat> to say that I was a little concerned about starting the school would be the, probably the biggest understatement in the history of speaking. I agree. Um, because Although our staff did a tremendous job to get us to the place when school started um, to have enough buses to cover the routes plus um, some spares, I knew we had about a 10-day window that um, we would not have enough buses on the road to um, transport kids. Um, there's a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of stress. Um, thankfully, we were able to do this, um, and over the last few weeks, we've been able to hire. We had a gentleman start on Monday. I have another gentleman starting on, um, I think it's the 14th of November, within the next couple of weeks. We hired two previous to this, so we are, and we have one that's in the process if we can get the credentials and certification, not the certifications, but the references checked, then we'll have um, him on board, and then, um, but I have 98 routes this morning, I had 95 buses. One of the reasons, and you, you may hear emails, get emails, um, one of the reasons why we haven't activated the GPS on the buses, because I have multiple people covering multiple routes trying to, because of our driver shortage, 
and um, not enough buses on the road. Um, that's why we kind of did not activate that yet. We're hoping to do that at some point this year. Once, if everything works well and we get our 50 buses, hopefully around April, um, that will be a tremendous help. Um, but it has been a tremendous, tremendous help to be able to hire we, prior to the uh, opportunity of the bonus, we went months and months without anyone even putting in um, an application. And when they did and we told them what the, the price was, our, our rate, they uh, chose to go other places. Of course. So we are very, very grateful. Yes. Well, the reason I wanted to bring you both up is because we've been discussing transportation for a long time, and with the advent of uh, purchase of 50 new buses, it's going to be, you know, uh, monumental for us as far as what we have going. Our major concern, and Lisa and you and I talked about it for a while, were the mechanics and the way you've come forward to fill that gap, a stop gap, and then now we'll make sure we continue those contracts forward and continue with our mechanics. So we're not spending money at the rate of, say, $150, $175 an hour for outside services where we can do our own fleet in-house. So I just wanted to bring you up here to pet you on the back because you won't be seeing my face anymore. And I wanted to thank you so much for all the flack that you took. Uh, there's not too many people that would survive that, and you did, and you're one hell of a man, I have to tell you. And Lisa, I can't thank you enough. You always respond to everything we ask of you, and uh, I'm just so damn proud of you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy, and we appreciate your support, too, thank over you. the years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jimmy, would you like to make a motion? Yes, I will. I would love to. Second. Please vote. Passes 5 0. Number 18, 23 1011. Approve the 2022 2023 dual enrollment. Articulation agreement between St. Leo University and the Hernando County School Board issuing assurance of purchase order for an estimated annual amount of $37,500. Hi. Hi, Beth. Hey. I just wanted to pull one of those Gomer piles on you. Surprise, surprise. I, I love that. Yeah. Love that. Thank you so would, much. You know, it, it's not often I'm going to get to see your face again, and I saw your husband tonight, and that was a great thing. So. The reason I brought you up, there's a lot of people who ask about dual enrollment, and I had several people called me, uh, one who is, you know, deeply involved in the community, and we, they wanted to know what the contract with St. Leo was. It the same similar contract that we have with PHSC? And if you could just yeah. explain what we do and, you know, why we do this. Absolutely. So, yes, it's the same type of contract. We have one with USF, UF, um, PHSC, and St. Leo. We're just renewing the agreement. Um, so that initiated out of um, Hernando High teaching program. So we partnered with them for the education courses because um, post-secondary institutions, based on their accreditation from the Southern Association of College and Schools, SACS for uh, short, they can only offer a certain amount of classes on a high school campus. So we have already maxed out of the ones that we could partner with PHSC for. So then we looked for the next closest that had a teaching program, which was St. Leo. So. And where did the funding come from? Who funds this? It comes out of our dual enrollment, the uh, same the same pot that our, our PHSC and USF. And then where did the dual enrollment funding come from? Is there a certain... Mm -hmm. funding source that you call it. I mean, we always have S or this, or mm -hmm. can you explain I that? believe it's just out of the general fund. Okay. Yeah, and, and when for we, opportunities for students. When we have uh, this dual enrollment program, mm -hmm. do we get any kind of breaks at all as far as if, if it costs so much for a class, do we get any reduction by Yes, spending? absolutely. We do. Yes. Um, St. Leo, I believe um, for theirs, I'd have to see what their general tuition is. I think it's probably four or $500 a credit, and we get it um, for 125 Okay, that's mm -hmm. nice. 
I wanted you to bring it up because that way people always think, you know, we just spend money needlessly, the kids really don't need it, why are we spending the money? I just wanted you to come in and explain the program to them because I know what it was, but they don't know what Absolutely. it was. Absolutely. And, and so it's, it's a great way for parents and for students to, well, for students to get the credits, but for parents to save on college. Because even though um, St. Leo is a private university, but those credits are going to transfer to PHSC, USF, UF, Florida State as elective credits if they don't go into the education major. And we have a lot of students right now that are taking advantage of those courses. Well, what I really like about the program is this, this one aims at, you know, sending our students to a facility that's going to get them a degree. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we're doing the CTE programs, mm -hmm. which you're involved in, and then Sophia's involved in the, uh, the VOTEC with uh, Wilson. So we seem to have completed a circle that wasn't here before, and now it, we're moving at a more rapid pace of getting kids uh, alternatives we're in trying. their lives, which I've been getting so many compliments from a lot of the families who called and said, my God, now you've really all put it together. I said, well, this board has been so proactive mm -hmm. to try to get that circle completed. and. I was just real proud of them. I wanted to bring you up here and have that discussion with you. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I think John would like yeah, to Yeah, I just uh, wanted to clear, I'd be real clear on the funding source. It does come from our general fund from the state and local dollars that yes. we receive for each student called full-time equivalency. At that high school level, it's, it's based on six periods. So one sixth, it breaks down like that. So if they're taking a PHSC class or class of St. Leo, that one sixth of FTE would go over and so on. If they were taking multiple classes or full time even at PHSC or at St. Leo, then that money would pass through and go to, to that agency. So it is pass through money for us and zero cost to the parent and or student. Thank you. Thank you. No, don't sit down yet. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Here I am. Yeah. Ms. Laster and I had a conversation about dual enrollment, and I think, what, last year we had about 30 of our students complete both their AA and their high school yes. diploma, uh, which saves parents and students thousands of dollars they can use toward their mm -hmm. four-year degree if they choose to do so. Uh, my question in calling her was that, um, all of these colleges and universities have different requirements for students to be able to participate in the dual enrollment. And I was asking her, our students used to take the PERT test, um, and that's not required by the legislature anymore. So um, Beth, being the person she is, she said, I think I need to put together a chart mm -hmm. with all the qualifications. If you want to go to UF as a dual enrollment, if you want to go to St. Leo or Pasco Hernando, and I know that would be very helpful to the parents in deciding. And um, I'm assuming that probably a student start out at a university as a dual enrollment that if they want to be accepted as a full-time student, that would probably give them an edge, possibly, um, in getting acceptance. It could. Different schools have different requirements. requirements right. Yeah, but right. the state university system does have, if students get their AA degree, kind of that that quicker path. Articulation, the faster, yes, right. The path yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. You're good. All thank right. you. You're released. <laughs> thank you. I'll never call you again, though. <laughs> Jimmy, you want to make this your last motion? I would love that. Thank you. And a second. Please vote. That passes 5-0. And we're back to citizens' input. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the opportunity for the public to be heard on any general topic of relevance to the operation of Hernando County Schools. Um, to speak at this time, speakers should have already submitted a pink citizen's input speaker form that you find in the tables as you enter the boardroom. If you have any documents that you wish to share with the board, please provide them to the board secretary prior to speaking. Each speaker has a total of three minutes to address the board and the remaining time is displayed in the monitors on the side of the boardroom. Speakers will be called to come forward by the chair. Prior to making your remarks, please state your name and address for the record. All comments are subject to applicable school board bylaws and policies, including those requiring appropriate decorum and civility. All statements should be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. Staff members shall not be expected to answer questions from the audience unless called upon to do so by the board chair or superintendent. 
Finally, please note that although the board encourages citizen participation, no immediate action can be taken on items presented during public comment. If follow-up action is required, then the matter may be placed on an agenda at a subsequent meeting in accordance with school board policy. Thank you. Thank you. Our first speaker is Stephen Anderson. Welcome back. What, what year was that? Two years ago. Two years ago? Two years ago? Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Haven Anderson. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a senior pre-law political science major at the University of South Florida, and I graduated from Hernando High School in 2021. I attended Challenger and Brooks Elementary before that. So um, I was a student representative. Oh, wait, I want to start and say... Congratulations, um, Mr. Lodato, and thank you so much for all the time that you've spent serving students. Um, I was a student representative in my senior year at Hernando High School, and I sat in your seat, Gina. Congratulations, by the way. I met the board members in depth while I was a student representative, but I knew them long before that. That's because the board members, especially Kay Hatch and Susan Duvall, visited each of the classrooms that I was in during my time at Hernando schools more than once a year. Not only did they visit, but they talked with students and teachers alike. They remembered teachers' names, asked them how they were doing, and sat in on lessons with as much interest as the students in the classroom, ready to soak up any knowledge that day. That's because teachers to them are more than just a paycheck or members of a teacher's union. They're human beings. Human beings who Kay Hatch and Susan Duvall and the other board members care about and listen to. I also knew that the, bo the board members because on more than one occasion I attended school board meetings for various achievements. And Kay Hatch and Susan Duvall not only greeted me, but welcomed me and celebrated myself and other students' achievements that day. They beamed with pride when they saw us and it made our achievements all that much sweeter. They know students. When myself, a disabled person, other disabled people throughout the district, parents, and other generally concerned people reached out to the board, Kay Hatch and Susan Duvall voted to keep us safe because our lives and our education matters to them. When I was a student representative, I've never felt more welcomed by a group of people. Susan Duvall and Kay Hatch asked me each time how I was doing, and not in the obligatory kind of way. They asked because they cared. They cared about me like they care about every other student in Hernando schools. When the issue of COVID graduation arose, I brought the issue up to the board and was disappointed when it wasn't possible. So to explain to me the issues they ran into, Susan Duvall showed me that she had already crunched the numbers. And I mean files upon files of venues upon venues because Susan Duvall knows students. She cared so much about students and their family's safety and satisfaction that she made sure every possible avenue for graduations was addressed and considered for every high school in Hernando County before students even raised concerns. Susan Duvall knows students. A little under a year post-graduation, I needed a letter of recommendation for a scholarship I was applying to. Of course I reached out to Ms. Hatch. Not only was she willing to write me that letter of recommendation, she was excited to hear from me, even though I wasn't a Hernando County student anymore. I mattered to her. My education in the Hernando County School District was more than successful, and at the end of the day, students and teachers are who matters when it comes to this board. Not politics, not what ifs, only what is best for the students. Listen to students and former students such as myself, teachers and people actually affiliated with schools for truth. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And a county student. <laughs> Got to be doing something right. <laughs> Hamilton Hanson. Hamilton, there's seven people up here. I only got four copies. Is there anybody specific you want to have this? Hello? Good Hamilton. evening. Wait a minute. You only made four copies. There's seven people. It's not mine. I don't know. What. There you go. That's not yours? Please. These aren't yours? The code of ethics? It was tape Okay. Okay. Let me have him back. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Like this. My name is Hamilton Hanson. I am known as the Angry Curmudgeon. <laughs> and you can get in touch with me at HamiltonHernando at Hotmail.com. 
Gina, you now have your own copy of the U.S. Constitution. There's a bucket of free constitutions at the back of the room. Everybody in this room all the time should have a copy of the Constitution. See, he's holding it up. Because our school board steadfastly insists that we live in a democracy, I have provided each of you a copy of the Constitution over the years. Two of you have enjoyed a photo op by displaying it while I speak. For any individuals who wish to receive a free copy, let me know. Since no board member has told me what kind of governance we have in the United States, let me direct you folks to page 15, section 4 of that Constitution booklet. Also, I have provided a number of sheets of paper to the audience of the official Constitution of the United States of America, Article 4, Section 4. I ask that the audience read aloud with me the precise words of that section. Ready? The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Repub Republican. Why, I swore we were in a democracy. We're actually in a republic. It says so right there in the Constitution. And I don't want to hear anybody in this room, anybody in this district ever again say that we are in a democracy. Read the damn Constitution. It says so right there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Julia Thomas. Um, first of all, um, I'd like Ms. Duvall to know that Hernando High finally got their Algebra 2 books that were ordered a week before school started. Eight weeks later, they got their books. They were the wrong ones. Um, but I really don't know why we need books, because apparently the teachers aren't teaching out of them. Okay, because if that was the case, my daughter would have passed her PERT reading test and not missed it by five points, only to come home to find out that she didn't know what a comma splice was, an adverb, or tone. 11th grade, I think our kids need to know that. Second of all, y'all are talking about putting your books on computers and giving them to all the kids. Well, how's that gonna work because during the pandemic, the kids had to go to Publix because the kids on the east side didn't have internet service. So I'm sure that those are gonna have links to the internet that they're gonna need, that they won't have, okay? My other child, um, and you gotta follow it because it does get a little bit confusing. Um, he has gone back and forth with one teacher, not once, twice, three times, but four times in eight weeks. Eight weeks. How's he supposed to learn when he's had three geometry teachers, two reading teachers, and a history teacher that's getting pulled out to teach AP so he can be replaced with sub? Now, I wanna know, um, if they don't pass their EOCs, are you guys gonna write them a note and say, please excuse them for not passing their EOCs? Because we didn't have the teachers. Um, but from what I hear from my kids, the teacher issue is the real problem. It's not what the teachers can't teach or this or that, it's the behavioral problems in the school. I have one sub that I know of, it's a retired teacher. Her sixth and seventh period class, she ends up crying. We should not have that. We need to kick these little asses out of school and let the kids that deserve to learn be there and not worry about y'all state fundings that you all were not worried about when DeSantis said about giving us the money. No, y'all wanted to mask them. Y'all said that was not important. Money was not important. Now you got what? Oh, we need the state money. We can't write them up. We can't do this. But let me tell you, um, as far as I know, Mr. Vaughn. Point of the, the drug coalition. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, no, hold on. No, 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 no your time's up. Oh, no, your time's up. No. Wait. No. Otherwise, you can get my kids to get drugs in the school. Would you please? It's for me to get a damn book. Oh, yeah, I'll leave him. Thank you. 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 And you know what? We're not going to last for this. <coughs> Patricia Greenwood. Hopefully, you won't get voted back, bitch. Oh. I'm called. Oh. Hi, Patricia Greenwood, Landover Boulevard, Spring Hill. Um, first, the comment on the buses. Okay, so I have actually had the pleasure of seeing one of the few new buses that we have gotten this year. Um, and every morning I am in awe of the brightness in the bus when the doors open because it's got the beautiful LED lights in there. You can see everything. A kid loses something, they can find it without needing flashlights. It's, it's beautiful. I can't wait till we have a whole bunch more of them. Um, secondly, I'm here to say thank you to the board, all of you, to the cabinet members who are here, all those who helped us Get emotional. Um, secure our position for our hallway. Um, the teacher that was supposed to come has fallen in love with the kids that she's been working with the first quarter, and I can't blame her because I would feel the same way. Um, but we we do have a couple people we've been talking to and not cannibalizing other schools because we're not going to answer that problem. Um, but we have a former para who left us because of pay who has a, ba a bachelor's degree, so we're hoping we can kind of lure her back in. And she's an awesome para too. Um, but I just wanted to thank you all for the, the support that we feel. Um, I can't say I disagree with a couple of things that were previously said, um, but we're working our way through it. One student is a, at a time, settling things down, getting everybody down to learning, and hopefully keeping our teachers, bringing more teachers in, raising them in our own schools at this point, through our teacher programs and other programs. So I'm very hopeful for the future. Thank you all, and Jimmy, I'm never losing your phone number. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I don't think he'll be losing yours either. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> Susan Pribble, please. Press it again. One more oh. Susan Pribble, Brooksville, Florida. I'm reading um, a statement from Liz Marion and Jennifer Bronhard. They couldn't be here tonight. We would like to first say that we are sorry we could not be here this evening. We are hosting a Deltona Spirit Night for our students. We did, however, want to have these remarks read on our behalf. We have known Jimmy Lodato for many years. We have worked together assuring that we have an SRO in every school and we worked on the half cent sales tax committee together. Jimmy was also instrumental in assuring that there is an oversight committee to see how that money is spent. He has always supported media centers and the library programs that we provide for our students. We have since become true friends. He had already raised his family and took his retirement years to give back to this community. Jimmy is an honest, hardworking, and dedicated member of our community. He is generous of spirit and with his time. He has worked tirelessly to improve our schools for our students and the people of Hernando County. Jimmy, your presence here will be truly missed and felt for a long time. We thank you for all you have done. We are proud to call you friend. Liz Marion and Jennifer Bronhard. Nice. Um, I'm going to let you keep this. Give you a hug to take back to the Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Yes. I'm going with them to see Springsteen in February, so oh. I'll hug them. <laughs> okay, my own words, Jimmy. Um, yeah, <laughs> I probably can't touch what they said, and I'm just speaking here. Um, but I feel like you were a board member for more years than you actually were because you were out campaigning for the half penny sales tax, working tirelessly to get the adult ed center up. And I don't know that a lot of people in this community valued you the way they should have. I don't know that you're going to be replaceable. Um, and all of you, this is the best board I've ever worked. I've said that many times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Carla Johns, you do better on pink than on green. 
<laughs> you know what? <laughs> I forgot to put my last name on the green one. Uh, Carla Johns, Brooksville. So I want to tell a really funny story about how I met Jimmy Lodato. A few years ago, I lived where a bus stop was two houses down from me, and I had the sign in my front yard. And I had speeders, and we're talking 55 miles an hour at a bus stop. So Miss Pam Everett put me in contact with Mr. Lodato. He turned around, he called Pam, and he goes, is she trustworthy? Pam goes, yes, but she's a spitfire. I don't really think you understood the magnitude of how much the spitfire was going to be in the la you know, <laughs> last few years. But Jimmy is the person who helped me when I was most scared to come up here for the first time ever after an incident that happened to my son. Jimmy is the one who helped me get through it because I told him I'm going to throw up. He goes, you know what? If you throw up, you throw up. But whatever you do, don't ever back down because you will lose any credibility that you ever had up to this point. You will become very credible because you are a parent and you are passionate and you're going to fight for what's best for your children. Jimmy, I have called you and your wife, Tammy, my friend, for the last two years. And just because you're not going to be on this board, you can't get rid of me that quickly. <laughs> I am going to miss you terribly being on this board. And I feel you got cheated out on this election. And I'm so sorry that we're stuck with Tardy Barbie. Thank you very much. That's from our. You'd be proud of her. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Gracie Malrooney. Oh. You want me to go with you? for Susan and Kay is a vote for children. Yeah. <laughs> That's an endorsement here. Yeah, really? I'll take that You bet. <coughs> you want to follow that, Kimberly? I can't follow that. Uh, yeah, sure. Let me just get my notes up. I did it on my phone this time. Okay. Go ahead. All right, Kimberly Marini, Brooksville, Florida, for the record. First, I didn't know about Mr. King. I th did he leave? Um, but he was my son's teacher in middle school, and I heard stories from my son that how much he loved that teacher. It was amazing to see. I'm so glad that uh, they honored him. Okay. Real quick, okay, the tutoring program, I understand uh, for the homework help is from fourth to 12th grade, and that it can help with the SAT, ACT, the FAST assessments. Here's my thing, third grade needs that too. It's a retention year. They need that uh, homework help as well. Um, I'm gonna try to be fast because I got a lot to say. Uh, Wiki Wachi won their home, uh, homecoming game on Friday. Yes, go Hornets. Uh, one nest, one swarm, one family. Uh, Pine Grove had a fall festival on Friday, and unfortunately we couldn't attend. I had a sick child, so but it looked like really a lot of fun. I know I went to their spring one. They really put on awesome things for the family. Also, Challenger had their trunk and treat, trunk or treat. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go that either because of sick children, but that looked like a blast, and I hope we get to do it again next year. Challenger, on Monday, October 31st, I'd like to invite the board to Mr. Stratton. The children will be doing a living biography museum where you can, their projects will come to life. They had to choose a historical figure. My daughter chose Lady Diana, so I hope you guys come and see that. It's at a 2.45 in the cafeteria. <clears throat> Monday. October 31st, Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea Lisa Maserio had for the stakeholder space on the forum, and I put mine and my daughter's on there for her. Okay, real quick, show and tell. I know I came and talked about Chomp Champs. This is what they look like. The children get this, and then who recognized them and for what? I just wanted to show you because I forgot. All right, my next show and tell. So I got crap in the mail, and I'm, excuse my language. Um, I don't, this is all lies. Uh, they never, you all never voted to raise our taxes. That was the voters who voted to raise the millage. Sure, we put masks on children, whoop de doo Let's talk about something else. CRT, I ain't seen it. My 16 year old came in here and said it ain't being taught. This is who they're promoting. This is who I'm not promoting. Vote for Susan and Kay. Our children depend on it. Nobody is going to play with my children's education, and I got three of them in this district, and I got a louder voice no matter what they got to say. Thanks. I think we know how she feels. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Mulroney, if you'll check with 
Miss Michaelica back there. I think you know her. Yeah. Uh, just about the tutoring, because we are expanding that. I just don't know if it's going to go down in that level, but the tutoring programs itself will ex uh, expand. She's back there. Since I got 20 quick seconds, I'm sorry. I understand not going lower than third grade, but the third grade, because it's a retention year, that was my thought for you. But talk to her, because she's got plans at all levels. So, yeah. <laughs> Lisa Macero. Good evening, Lisa Masario, Brooksville, Florida. Um, I'm actually reading something on behalf of one of our worksite leaders because she was unable to make it tonight, and she worked really hard on wanting to be here to deliver it herself, so I'm gonna try to get through it because it's long. <laughs> uh, good evening, school board members and Mr. Stratton. My name is Charlene Francisco, and I reside in Rainbow Woods, Spring Hill, Florida. I come before you tonight to speak in regard to a daily life in my classroom. I have been an educator for 29 years, teaching language arts, physical education, serving as a former athletic director, varsity coach, and a part-time e-school hope teacher. Every day, I have the honor of instructing and motivating 220 students 220 students on the importance of physical activity in their everyday lives. Some days this is not easy as students are unmotivated and reluctant to engage in physical activity. However, I strive to demonstrate the importance of making a connection with their own health. I make sure that every student in my class knows they possess a special gift and talent in this world and that their it is their job to try and develop and explore it. As a physical educator, I've been blessed with coaching numerous young athletes to reach their maximum potential and to be the best at their craft. This may include challenging them beyond their initial goals to develop confidence. I do not stand alone in this challenging task. Coaches all over the county spend numerous hours motivating, conditioning, and listening to their students. They strive every day to make a connection and establish a relationship with their athletes. These connections may continue for years to come, I have per personally witnessed <clears throat> students who come to school only for sports and to have physical education daily, developing the necessary skills of teamwork, work ethic, and commitment to excel at something. Some days it is just simply giving them encouraging compliments, going out for a sport, or realizing the potential that they possess the skills to succeed. These simple words of encouragement often lead to alumni returning to my school to thank me for believing, believing in them, realizing that they have a unique gift to explore in this world. I personally thank you for recognizing coaches and their commitment to their athletes. They work tirelessly and endless hours. Furthermore, in my program, I help students realize the importance of serving their community. For over 20 years, my students have participated in the American Heart Association Hoops for Heart program. This program promotes awareness of heart disease and allows students to raise funds for a worthwhile cause. I'm proud to state that Powell has raised over $75,000 for this effort. Mm -hmm. In fact, because of their support, I was recognized as the National Hoops for Heart Coordinator of the Year at our National Physical Education Convention in Dallas in 2008. This recognition would not be possible without my students. In addition, students participate in Stack Up for Cancer during World Stack Up Day. This holds a special meaning for me as I lost my youngest brother to this disease. I fondly remember this event in 2018 and Charlene's gonna have to come back and finish the <laughs> thank you and uh, Glenn Laster Mike is that Glenn uh, it's Mike Laster yeah, oh that's your real I never knew that <laughs> Glenn Lastra, um, Spring Hill. So I need you <laughs> my address. How's this work? I've never done this before. Right. So, um, you guys have seen me speak up here many times. Um, most of the time, as a proud principal, talking about some of the amazing things that I've um, been doing at my school, and my students have been doing, and my teachers have been doing. Um, but tonight, with all the negativity out there about our school district, about our school board, um, I felt compelled to come and just talk about how proud I am to be part of Team Hernando. Um, I grew up in this county, graduated from Central High School. I won't ever let Kelly know that, you know, that I'm a, a bear at heart, but you know, I bleed purple and gold now. But um, I grew up in this county. I've worked in this district for 19 years. This is the beginning of my 19th year. And I've seen a lot, and I can say I've never been prouder to be part of Team Hernando. I've never seen a more unified district. I've never seen our teachers go above and beyond like they do. And they're doing it now in a unified front. Every time I go online, I see amazing things from our teachers, district-wide. I gotta watch my time, because you guys know I like to talk. Um, 
our administrators, the innovation that they pull together on our monthly principals meetings, if we're at a conference, or just going to their schools, the ideas we share with each other is all about kids. And for that negativity that's out there about our school district, it does hurt my heart because I am all about this district. Because not only am I someone that went to school in this district and worked in this district, my children go to school in this district. My beautiful wife, who did not tell me to say that, works in this district. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it's who I am. And we really need to, to showcase that, and we're showcasing it all the time about the things we're doing. And, and lastly, the school board and its members and our superintendent. I know Ms. Pribble said it, she's never had a, I, I, I agree with her, I've never had a more proud moment to work for a school board like this. Everything you guys do is supportive. Everything you guys do is all about children. And, and it's just amazing. You know, I'm being moved to Eastside this, this summer. Every one of you guys came up to me and asked me, how can I help, how can I do that? And many of you on the board came to our events this summer at Eastside Elementary. Kay Hatch was there on the hottest day, uh, giving out popsicles, it was really hot, and, and it, was, it was an amazing event. Susan Duvall came out, all right? And so it, I'm just very proud of this. And Jimmy, thank you for everything you've done. And the last thing I'm gonna do, because I only got 30 seconds left, is just, it's a challenge to anyone that's watching this, anyone that's behind me listening. If you have some questions about what's happening in our schools, come to our schools. And I promise you, every principal, every teacher, every student will be proud to take you around that campus and show you the amazing things that happen every single day at the schools of Fernando County. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thomas Kellerman. Say something. Hold up a minute. No, you can stay there. We'll change the whole program for you. Okay. okay. Tom Callum at Brooksville, Florida. Um, again, I just want to kind of follow up with what Mike was just saying. Um, I worked in another district as an administrator. I can tell you that in all the time I was in that district, I didn't see board members on campus as much as I see our current board. Um, and it's not just coming out at election time, it's coming out for all of our events. And it's coming out and talking to our parents, talking to our students, talking to our teachers. Um, Kay, I've seen you clean up dishes at events. I mean, it's things that need to be done. You guys are there every step of the way. Um, Jimmy, today, tonight's your last board meeting. You could have mailed it in. You didn't, you're very involved. <laughs> Um, and that, I think that speaks volumes to the professionalism of this board, the support of this board. Um, Mr. Stratton, from the moment I got hired as principal at Pine Grove, you and your staff and the board, anything you need, Tom, just let us know. And uh, anytime I pick up the phone, you guys are there. So um, I do appreciate it. I am sorry you missed Fall Festival. Um, I will not be going out in the Olympics for the sack race though, so, um, but we have a great time. Um, I'm so uh, appreciative of our families, our teachers. We have a great staff at Pine Grove. There is a lot going on and as Mike said, if there's anybody out in, in the public that wants to know what's happening on our campuses, just come out. We'll be more than happy to show you because there is a lot of good things happening in Hernando County. Student achievement is on the rise and has continued to be on the rise for the last couple of years. So it's easy to find the negatives and things, but if you really look at what we're doing in Hernando County, we've got a bright future ahead. So thank you. All. Thank you very much. Brad Benson. Good evening, Brad Benson, uh, pristine place. I know you all never thought that I would uh, come here to defend the school board, <laughs> but um, we got a real crisis. First off, Jimmy didn't lose. Anybody that knows anything about these elections and the Blaze and Golia mafioso knows that these uh, elections were stolen from a couple of candidates in 13 counties around Florida. The tabulating machine suddenly stopped counting right at a key moment. And I just remember looking and seeing that my good friend, Monty Floyd, the carpet-bagging cowboy was down by 3,000 votes. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then two and a half hours later, they still never got the machines up, and Blaise and Golia got up and announced to all the candidates that already knew who was gonna win that uh, here's the numbers and suddenly, Monty Floyd's in a runoff with Susan and Jimmy's loss, which is, that's just, that just didn't happen. Jimmy's the most popular school board member here, even with people that don't like the school board. And uh, <clears throat> he won. Now, uh, I have filed uh, a federal case in federal district court to get rid of the machines in the state of Florida. We have the only case in the state of Florida right now, we being me, because no lawyers want to take it because they're all getting, uh, well, judges and lawyers don't want to take it because they don't want to argue against, they don't want to be election deniers, makes us terrorists. All right, that being said, uh, does anybody here know why the Moms for Liberty, this wonderful Moms for Liberty that caught you all bringing that porn into our schools, okay, why they would have a connection to communist China? You say, what? Why would a group that's here for, mom, oh, 55 seconds, geez, I don't want to get arrested tonight. Let me, <laughs> let me, uh, let me move on here. What I, I, I'm getting ready to sue Monty Floyd for defamation of character, him and his haughty wife. Yes. Okay, and as part of that, I've been doing a little research on the Moms for Liberty and Tina Deskovich and Marie Rogerson and uh, oh, I forget the other lady's name, uh, Tiffany Justice. They all have great names. Um, they have, uh, those of you that know about child trafficking know about the proliferation of foundations in the child trafficking industry. And um, these people seem to be tied up in a whole lot of foundations a whole lot of screwy name things, but the most screwy name thing is uh, that they have registered as a foreign entity. And the foreign entity that they are registered with is Cogency Global, which is a Hong Kong limited company. Now, Thank I'm you, sir. Against the Chinese. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Benson. Thank you. So I'm gonna give you this, Mr. Duvall. And you should put this up on the billboard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to control things. Okay, Anita Bonez. You know, he says last night's entertaining. You got to follow that. Talk about going out with a bang, huh? Good evening. Uh, and it's Barnes. Barnes. Anita Barnes. Excuse me. And boy, that's kind of a tough act to have to follow. <laughs> and I'm going to hand that to you to start with. You can pass it around. Um, I'm going to talk about what I think is a problem. So there's kind of some good news and some kind of bad news. Um, the first thing that I do want to say is. I think it's really important. Parents, if you don't get out and use your voice to protect your kids now, they'll, they're gonna inherit a world in which they have no voice and they have no freedom. So, now, <clears throat> for the bad news. I'm gonna kinda go out on a limb and guess nobody knows about this, but <clears throat> I'll read you the headline. Sheriff Neenhouse, other brass, accused of terminating deputy who refused to participate in group sex parties. Uh, this is from, I believe it was the September the 25th. Um, this raises a heck of a lot of questions. Um, makes you, me, makes the hair on my neck stand up because raises a lot of questions about how it ties in with the Baker acting. What is really going on here? Um, considering Blaze and Goglia's pack and their strategically timed hit piece, uh, which was definitely intended to install his favorite disingenuous cowboy school board candidate, who has very suspicious ties in the sheriff's department among other, other organizations. Further, no one trusts our elections. 
And who believes the cowboy went from the loser with the lowest numbers, and we saw that at the Strzok poll, to suddenly becoming champion? It, it don't add up right. As I said, how this ties with the Baker acting of defenseless kids, and uh, not that SROs uh, have all the decision making, but given the first page of the Florida Department of uh, Mental Health Allocation Plan, and every county has one, uh, the way that reads, there's more than abundant reasons for an independent investigation, and the cowboy needs to be disqualified. And we definitely have a situation where we got the pot calling the, pot, the kettle black. So on that, I'm sorry for what happened to you. I think it was pretty low class and it should not happen. So I'll leave you with that. Next speaker is Pam Everett. <laughs> Pam Everett, Brooksville, Florida. Jimmy, I want to thank you for everything. You and I go back 10 years. We've been on the same side and we've been on opposing sides, but it's always been about the kids. It's always been. And I want the people to know the board has to vote on decisions that are handed down from Tallahassee. They don't understand. Sometimes your hands are tied. It has to start. I proved that with the FSA. I went all the way to Tallahassee on that one. You did what you were supposed to do. I didn't like the way it went. I went to Tallahassee and fought them. Going forward, I want to point out a few things. We had a Republican board at one time. When Dr. Romano sat on that board, we had three Republicans. And I will say that Susan Duvall voted with those Republicans to remove her. And thank you for that. Yes. I tried to do it with my pink slip and that went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Republican board. It changed nothing. And they have to understand, involvement is what's going to make the change. The five of you up here have a voice, but sometimes your hands are tied. And each and every one of you, when you vote, it's what you believe is for the best interest of the kids. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's about the kids. Every single one of us that has given our time regardless as if it's on the board, in a classroom. They give their times. Our teachers give their time. It's stressful on them, it's stressful on their families, but there's something in those people's hearts that they continue to give. If they do not, our kids wouldn't be here. They would go nowhere. Our kids are our future, and these parents need to understand, if we do not make the right choices this time, our kids are in trouble. Our teachers are at their limits now. You put the wrong board in here, how many are gonna stay? I wouldn't. I'd find someplace else to go teach, because these teachers have it in their heart. They're a special breed. And if we don't give them the board that they can work with, one that will support them, we're gonna really have issues. So again, we need to take the politics out of this, do what's right for our kids. We're not always gonna agree with one another, but the bottom line is what is best for our kids. That's what matters. Again, we're not gonna agree on everything, but where is it coming from? Where is that vote coming from? And it comes from the heart. It comes from what we really believe it's right for the kids. I will continue to fight for our kids. I will continue to advocate. I wanted to take Susan's seat. Sorry, Susan. I wanted that seat. Ms. Everett, thank <laughs> you. I will continue. I will thank continue you. Everett, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're on court. Are we back to work? Okay. We're having trouble with the timer, but we are keeping time over here, so don't go by that. It's working by you? Okay. Cindy Canley? 
Is that right? Andy. Candy? Andy. Andy. <laughs> Hi, you. Yeah, me. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I told you to come back. Hi, I'm Cindy Gandy, born and raised in Brooksville and very proud of it. And I just wanted to tell Jimmy in front of everybody that I'm going to miss you. The first time I met Jimmy, I was at Adult Ed Painting. And he introduced himself and asked me who I was, and I told him, and we had a really nice conversation. The next time I saw him, he remembered who I was. Very impressive. Um, and I just wanted to say that I respect all of you, the deepest of my heart. I mean, Susan, I've known you for how long? <laughs> Should I tell them? She was my teacher in junior high. Um, Kay Hatch, I met you when you were campaigning the first time. And Linda, I met you when you were campaigning. Gus, I've known you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stratton, I've known you forever. Um, and any time I was at any of the schools painting, you would all come up to me and say, hello, how are you doing? And um, I miss it because I'm retired now, but I'm loving retirement. I've been retired since January. I haven't come back to volunteer yet. I will someday. <laughs> we got a paintbrush for you. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say about the smut mail, my granddaughter is the only one in our household that got that letter out of all of us, the adults. So I got in contact with the person in charge of that, and you know who it is. And he said, well, how old is your granddaughter? I said, it's none of your business. It's my granddaughter. And he says, well, I'm not um, understanding this. We only sent it out to the last four elections, whoever voted in the last four elections. And I said, you're a liar. So just to let you know, he lied to me because she had never voted before. So right there is a liar. Sorry, dear Lord. But... <laughs> um, Anyway, I'm just behind you 100%, behind you 100%, behind everybody 110%, 150%. You know, I, I respect all of you. And um, I need a T-shirt. <laughs> all right, thanks. Thank you. Alexander Hernandez. Hello, folks. Hi, uh, my name is Alexander Hernandez. Um, I just, I, it was really nice hearing all the positive feedback from folks. That was really cool. Uh, real briefly, I wanted to say um, it was a surprise seeing the, the, the teachers here who just ratified their contract. That was awesome. I, I come from a union household. I'm also a union member. And everyone in this room, every worker should have a union. So if you don't have one, it's just talk to your workers. Talk to me in the back before you leave. It's very easy. So, But yeah, everyone should have a union. Uh, they're very important for democracy. Um, and finally, I wanted to say uh, it's, it was really awesome seeing the students come up here, teachers backing um, the board, the board that's running. I've done a little bit of research on these elections since I was last year, and I just want to say it's, it's frightening to see that folks are intent on running a school board who have no interest in public education, um, and that is for a lot of reasons it's harmful right but it's it's and there's a lot of money i know the gentleman said china and stuff but it's not that complicated you got to follow the money this mom's a liberty group we know that they have a big budget that is generally larger than most i mean there's a lot of schools a lot of infrastructure you got to keep up with right so there's a lot of money and folks want to get into that pie the gentleman who is the guy who represents this area, Iglesia or whatever, and the, the governor, right? They got their crew together. That's where the money comes from, from this Moms of Liberty group. And they want to make sure that the money for these projects that the board approves goes to their friends. So that's ultimately what it's about. Um, I trust the folks up here because the folks back here have come up and uh, said it over and over. I don't trust uh, a dude who looks like uh, he's a con man, like he's gonna swindle you with his little hat, like folks have mentioned. So yeah, um, 
thank you for the teachers, thank you to the board folks. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my part in getting out the vote for y'all. I appreciate hearing that the community is doing that too. Um, and yeah, that, that's it, um, thank you. Thank you. Collision <laughs> Moore. Everybody else is all nice. Good seeing you again. Everybody else is all sweet tonight. And then the big bad Asia Moore comes up from Brooksville, Florida. Um, <laughs> so as you can see, Tiny Monster is restless tonight and around here. Jimmy, I'm going to miss you. My first time standing before this board, Mr. Stratton, I wanted to do some not-so-nice things and scream some not-so-nice things at you guys, but over the last couple of years, I've really come to become fond of working with you guys as much as I may disagree with some of you and your choices. You still answer my calls. You guys still will help me out whenever I ask for help, and that I appreciate. So I'm coming to you guys today to ask you guys for help because there is not a school in our district that looks pretty. There is not a school in our district that when you walk up to it, it makes you fe feel proud to call that your home school. Every single one of them has trash in their driveway. Every single one of them has a lawn that's overgrowing. Every single one of them has paint falling off of the walls. Every single one of them has issues. Please stop, child. Sit right here with my feet. <laughs> Tiny little human, stop moving. <laughs> I have a son that attends Spring Hill Elementary, and I have made sure that the principal knows that I'm willing to volunteer. I don't care if it's with a broom. But with the behavior issues that I see on campus, there is no reason why y'all can't send out a permission slip for the parents instead of doing in-school suspension. Can't send them out there with a the broom to start picking up the trash in front of our schools. <laughs> Do something to clean up our schools and constructive with these kids who are just having issues like mine, sitting still. It happens, I understand that, but there's something that can be done and there's something that we could benefit from it with it in our schools. Education seems to be a problem. Public education seems to be a huge problem. I stand up here tonight to talk to you guys about an issue with the school and I'm listening to everybody else talk about the elections and while we all know that I am not a fan of that cowboy and that I've done the ethics complaints and all of that, nobody truly knows where they're supposed to go to voice their distaste for these people. Nobody knows where they're actually supposed to go to stand to ask the questions of those of you guys that are running. There's no debates. There's no open house for politicians. There's no information out there on where we can actually go that what we have to say and our distaste or our like for somebody is actually heard. So a lot of our meetings are being taken up by stuff like that. And sometimes it's babble and sometimes it's boring and other times it's entertaining. And I kind of missed the show tonight and got here late, but... <laughs> It's a problem with education. There's not enough information out there on where else parents can go to find out more about our current board members that are up for election or the ones that are running f against them other than the propaganda that we get in the mail. I'm not saying that's our board's responsibility because your responsibility is to make sure my child passes his test and gets to the next grade, but I think something needs to be done with the Parent Academy to be able to get it out there on how we can actually better communicate this stuff for future elections because for some reason everybody in the state of Florida, as much as I love it, School boards become partisan, and we're supposed to be nonpartisan. So let's find a way to work together. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Moore, it's nice to see that you passed on the level of en energy to your child. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, uh, Melinda Cook, somehow I missed you. Could have said I'm saving you for the last because you're the best. I was not planning on speaking tonight. So huh. uh, Melinda Cook, Brooksville, Florida. I have been a teacher in Hernando County for 20 years. I graduated from Hernando in 96. So I am back to now purple and gold after being at Explorer. Um, so I just really wanted to say thank you to Jimmy. Um, one of my first big introduction to union work was working with Jimmy on the half cent sales tax. And uh, I went to my first meeting with everybody on the committee and Jimmy was the first one to say hello. And and never stop saying hello after that. Um, we worked really hard. We developed our red support public education t-shirts. We were on the corner every Thursday waving our signs. And the community came and supported us in a way that it blew my mind because it was literally the only thing on the ballot. And to just not only get the support, but get the number of people who actually came out and voted in that election was amazing. And just it kind of it reinvigorated the 
the dedication, I think, in the community to the schools because we saw how important it was. Um, I also just wanted to thank the board for their support. I know that the bargaining um, adventure is not always sunshine and rainbows, um, but this year I feel like from hearing everything from our side of the bargaining committee, it has gone probably the most smoothly that it has ever gone in the past, and that's an amazing thing. And it's one less thing that the teachers in the county have to worry about. Um, we are in a dire straits when it comes to public education. We're getting hit from every avenue, and the support that we know, at least from our core board, that's what's keeping people where they're at, because the outside we can't control, but what we can control in-house is what's important. So I just wanted to say thank you to the board, and thank you to Jimmy. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, next one is probably Jimmy's favorite fan, is Tammy Lodato. Actually, I should be looking at all of you because uh, my heart is just full with the warmth of your words. I have seen Jimmy spend many nights crying, yelling, <laughs> Jimmy? Frustrated, about the stressful, <laughs> because the only thing he cared about was the district, these students. Every parent has what, maybe two, four, five kids, maybe more. Jimmy worried about 24,000 students, 24,000 kids. That's a lot of love in your heart. That's a lot of worry, but Everything he did was to make a better life for them. Jimmy grew up very poor. His first job, he was eight years old. So he's been working a long time. He knows what it's like to face poverty. He knows what it's like to face an uncertain future. So he knows what it's like to get in with a bad group. But he also knows what it's like to have someone care in the form of his teachers, his principals, the SROs, the firefighters, people who truly are the village. I know some people don't like that phrase, but he's the personification of it takes a village because his family was very poor. Everybody had to work. They didn't have time for him. But as an adult and a school board member, he wanted to make sure that every student had an opportunity. If they don't want to go to college, if they have issues, if they have problems at home. He wanted to make sure that they would have an opportunity. Dual enrollment, the Votech school, that was his dream. You know, the kids with, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I don't know the lingo, but the kids with special needs. He had all of these on his list of things to do. I think he pretty well covered the list. Is there anything left? <laughs> but I'm talking about Jimmy, but every school board member here is the same. I've seen you in action. I've seen you disagree. I've seen you come to compromises. Everyone here I know cares about the kids in this county. And anyone who doesn't believe that is not paying attention. But Jimmy likes to say that I'm his gift. He's my gift from God. And I was happy to share him with you, but now he belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep his number, you can call him. Jimmy would never turn anyone down. But I'm going to spend a lot of time keeping him busy. <laughs> Thank you. Beautifully said. Sound like jealousy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> wrapping things up. <laughs> Susan. Oh, it's like we're done. We're done. Oh, I quit, John. No. Only for Gina's sake. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> a couple of things. Uh, congratulations go to the schools who will be receiving additional funding for maintaining an A school grade level or improving their school grade le <laughs> letter by at least grade by one letter. Congratulations to Jill Renahan for her work with leading the Safe Schools program for our district. The National Law Enforcement Certification has recognized the Hernando District for exemplary safety and security in all areas. Quite a job. Our school district has a half day tomorrow. Sorry, parents. While this allows students some time away from school, the half day does afford the opportunity for continuing teacher and staff development, and that is important in, in that it benefits our students. November 10th, the education fair is gonna be at Hernando High School, 5.30 to 7.30. I'd like to recognize Brooksville Elementary for their opening of their new PBIS room tomorrow. Uh, best wishes go to Hernando High School for the growl <laughs> and fireworks on Thursday and the parade and homecoming game this Friday. And last, I wanna thank Jimmy for his energy in helping direct a successful Half Cent Initiative and the Simpson Tech College. Those are two extremely important events in our um, growth as a school district. I appreciate his dedication to the students, parents, and our community, and thank you for being on the board. Okay. I, I'm reminded this evening as I've listened to all of the comments about our school district and about how we function as a team, how significant that is for our community. And that is a real gift that we share with one another and that we need to continue to share out in the community. Um, we are, um, I, I can't think of enough words to say how healthy we are as we work together. Healthy is different from perfect, but we are working well together, making terrific progress. Our students are growing um, and we need to continue that momentum. Now, I needed to say all of those words before I say, Thank you to my friend, Jimmy. And I thought I was going to be okay with this, my friend. Don't make Jimmy cry. Okay. <laughs> then I'll be still. We have not always agreed. We have not always seen eye to eye. But there has never been a time when I have questioned your commitment to this district to our students and to our staff, as well as your commitment to the health and growth of this community. And as one board member and as a friend, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Linda. Um, I would like to say um, thank you to Mr. Callaman. I'm excited about Thanksgiving coming back. It's been a few years, but I've always enjoyed that. And this Friday, um, I'm happy to report, is going to be the 50th anniversary of Westside Elementary. Um, and my neighbor actually went to Westside Elementary, and I think she's 55. <laughs> so I, I think that's quite a, a testament to it. Um, Finding the words um, to say to Jimmy um, have been very difficult. And I found a song that I was hoping that we could play tonight. And those of you who like country music know um, what that song is. Would anybody like to maybe guess? 
The song is I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. <laughs> so I wanted to dedicate that song to him, and I'm sorry we weren't able to play it, but I'm sending it to you, um, Tammy, so you can enjoy it. And you'll understand why I wanted to dedicate. And Kim's shaking her hand. And those of you who, who know the song know why that it was a perfect song for Mr. Lodato. So I, I wish you and, and Tammy the very, very best. And thank you from working with you for the half penny sales tax, for being on the board with you and for the Simpson School. Um, I, I know we'll see you again because there's no way to keep you from not coming to that grand opening. <laughs> I know. So I'm not saying goodbye. You, you never like to say goodbye to friends. Just see you soon. I hope so. Thank you, Mr. Fon. I have um, two quick thanks. You, thank yous. One, thank you for uh, giving me another uh, year of service to the board as general counsel. And, and then I wanted to say to Mr. Lodato, thank you very much for your service to this board. It has been a, a pleasure serving the board and serving you. Uh, and I wish you and Tammy all the best in your travels and uh, you know, hide the cell phone for at least a couple weeks so you guys can get around. <laughs> Gina, you wanna say something? Uh, on behalf of all the students in Hernando County, I would like to say thank you for your service to us and what you have done for us in these past years. It really means more than you know, so thank you. John? Yeah, just a few things coming up. Uh, tomorrow, I'm surprised it wasn't mentioned here, but tomorrow's uh, Red for Ed. Red for Ed, don't forget that, to support ed, uh, public education. And the board hopefully has a copy. I'm looking at Lisa Massario. Hopefully they've received a copy of the schools that are participating, which I believe most are. The respective staffs are meeting at the flagpole, typically, and then doing a walk-in in support of public education. That's happening tomorrow morning as early as probably 7.15, 7.45, 8, 6.15. I won't be at that one. Uh, so uh, come out, show your support, and, and uh, walk in with staff, board members, if you have the opportunity uh, to do that. And then at Western Man Hernando Middle School, Thursday night, we have the ESOL Parent Leadership Council at 6 p.m. West uh, Westside Elementary, Friday night at 6 p.m., will be celebrating their 50th anniversary. So it's been there for quite a while. And there will be many, many, many Veterans Day celebrations coming up, so keep a, keep a lookout for that. Uh, and please uh, pick which ones you can attend. And, and then see Roy, which is our school-related employee of the year. And I'm mentioning these because we won't have another meeting between now uh, at least we won't have a meeting where we take this kind of business action at. Uh, on the 10th of November, the C-Roy meeting, and I believe it's at Silverthorne again, Tammy? Yeah, so looking forward to that. And I just want to wish everyone a very safe Halloween next week. Uh, and it's a great day for us because we didn't do it during some of the COVID period. But we get the elementary kids next door. The uh, I believe it's just the kindergarten come over and they're dressed up and and we dress up a little mm -hmm. bit too. And you can see the building and and hand out candy. So it's a, it's it's a good reminder for everybody over here why we do what we do. Uh, so it's a great reminder on that. And then finally, um, Jimmy, I can't thank you enough for the last four, five, six, seven years uh, working as superintendent and before that, knowing you before that as well. Um, your service and, and, and just your energy. And, and then when people realize you're 80 years old, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> you have more energy than probably anyone in this room, except for maybe you kids. Uh, but you channel it in such a positive direction and, and for service, and, and I appreciate that. And I meant it earlier when I said I'm gonna miss our talks. I'm definitely going to miss our what I call my uh, morning Jimmy devotionals, is when he'll call me really early, because uh, he's up, and he'll call me really early, and it doesn't matter if he's ramped up, upset, or just excited. It's always presented in a positive way to me as on how we're gonna hit the ground running, John. <laughs> we're gonna do this. Uh, so 
thanks for pushing me and driving me as well. And uh, I miss you, but I've got your number, you've got mine. Don't be strangers as you travel around the world and have fun. Don't be strangers. And I, and I know where you live for now, so I'll drop by. <laughs> and thank you, Tammy, for allowing Jimmy to, to serve up here. <laughs> First, I want to thank everybody for coming out. And then I want to tell you, Jimmy, I'll never say goodbye to you. We've been together for 10, 12 years, something like that. You're a great mentor, great leader. I learned a lot from you. You're an ex example of what a perfect school board member should be. And then I would like for you to do the honors of having last to speak and then adjourning our meeting for us. Thank you, Gus, for your kind words. And UK, Susan, Gina, John, my Ybor City friend, Dennis, <laughs> and Linda, who I've known for many years. We even served in the DEC together, didn't we, Linda? We did. we did. Had a lot of good times. It's kind of bittersweet because uh, I wanted to see the school completed and up. And uh, Sean is going to make sure that gets done and gets finished. And I know that Sophia is in the back who who have the whip in hand and make sure that we get everything that we said we wanted from those builders and that uh, design group. And I have the greatest of confidence in you, Sophia. We've been together since 2013. 2013, talking about this concept over at Corporate Jet when I first met you. And I knew then you were a winner and that we would get this done. And we did get it done. It could not have been done without this board. Every single one of them listened to me ranting and raving about what we we're gonna do. When I used to sit up there and Susan was on the board and we talk about the half cent and Gus was the chair and we were hammering the fact that we lost the half cent and that we lost the money we needed to repair the schools. And the schools were in, in terrible shape coming off of 2012, the Great Recession. Uh, no one spent any money because they didn't have the money to repair them. And so a group of 13 volunteers got together, and one of them is right here, Greg Laskowski and Tammy Brinker, and all the board people, Melinda, all of us got together and fought an uphill battle called SOS Hernando. We we're going to save this district, and we we're all volunteers, and people thought we were crazy, but we did it. 120 plus million dollars to repair the schools. And they said it couldn't be done, but we did it. Then we turned around and we put SROs in our schools to make sure our kids were safe. I mean, that was a huge cost factor, everybody said, and we all said on this board, well, what's a child's life worth? We have to spend the money, we have to protect our kids, and we did it. We protected our kids, didn't we? And then we needed buses, and we came up with 50 new buses, half the fleet to be replaced in one shot. Thanks to Heather, Lisa, and the whole group, they figured it out. And, and we got the, the 50 buses ordered. And they'll be here next year, and that'll be done. And then we finished the equation of getting the funding for our schools. It was a tough, tough battle dealing with the legislators. And we got vetoed two years in a row by the governor. And at, at the same time, you know, we had a, a situation called a hurricane in the panhandle, and he was, just came on board. And so he didn't know what his budget was going to be. And I'm sure that's the reason he vetoed it. And then the second year, we had COVID. And so we asked it again for the $10 million, and it was vetoed one more time. And everybody kept saying, what was it, Susan? Oh, we, <laughs> we're never going to get that bill. And we said, no, we're going to push this whole thing forward, and we're going to push it over and over and over again until we get it. And on the third year, the funding came through $9.3 million. Thank God for Wilton Simpson, who pushed it, and Ralph Mazzullo, who pushed it through. And it couldn't have been done without this board. Couldn't have been done. Then we had another problem. We were going to build it at Central High. Figured we had the property, we'll build it there. And then Dennis Wilfong, Dr. Wilfong, cornered me at, at Mr. Hogan's office and said, why don't we build it at the airport? 
So they said to me, you know, let's go over and talk to the BOCC. That's what Dennis said, let's go talk to them. <laughs> so, of course, I'm gonna step in front of the BOCC and tell them I want, I want some land at the airport. And they said, oh, we don't have any land. So wait a minute, it's an airport. You have land, ask for the land. Where, where is the land? The land is right behind Gale Insulation. And so they had purchased that land. So why don't you let us have that land? And the administrator tells me, Jeff Rogers, well, we'll figure out how much it's gonna cost you. I said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm not asking to buy it. We are asking to lease it. He said, well, we can do a lease. I said, that'll be great. He said, how much did you have on hand? What did you wanna pay us? I said, I wanna give you a dollar a year for 99 years. <laughs> and he sat there and laughed at us, did he not, Gus? He laughed at us, John. Well, we got the land. We got the land. And then PHSC came on board and said, you know, we're gonna put ours right alongside of you. And then Jeff Rogers said, well, we wanna put a county building in the, in the middle of it or on the side. And so the three of us got together and we, we got the land. But we didn't know the land was submerged, you know? The land was underwater a bit. Swamp. Right, Susan? That flood zone. A lot, Linda. Swamp. And they turned around and said, you know, we're gonna have to figure out how much it's gonna cost to bring that land up to where we could build on it. So we found out we're gonna have to add on six feet of land and compress it down to four. So we asked, well, what's the cost of that plus the sidewalks and the infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. $6.1 million. $6.1 million. The board thought we were crazy. You know, like, Jimmy, we're gonna get $6.1 million. And I said, do not we, Susan? So we're gonna get that $6.1 million. And we pushed to get that $6.1 million, did we not? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't our money. We gave it to the county because it's the county land. But they're gonna go ahead and put the infrastructure. The thing I'm trying to say is, then we had a cost increase. We couldn't make it with 9.3. I had to go back to Senator Simpson. I asked the board, can I go back and speak to Senator Simpson? They said, yeah, go ahead and do it. I went over to speak to him. I told him I need more money. How much money do you need? I said, four million would do it. He said, what about 2.5? 2.5. So I go back to Sophia. Can we do it for 2.5? She goes over to Sean and talks to them. We had all this discussion and we found out, yeah, we could do it for the 2.5. So here's what I'm telling you. This board is a... It's a group of people who are totally different. You know, three educators, two businessmen, an incredible superintendent, who's, he's interactive with this community, but yet we have people out there who are trying to take him out. They want it to be an elected office so that they can do a partisan election and win that seat too, like they do at the county commission. So they wanna control this district. So here's what I'm telling you, and this is the reason for the conversation. This has been a long battle, and you heard our teachers talk about the uh, association that they have with this board and how they were able to get raises, how many years, seven years in a row, raises every single year. We worked with you. We knew what you wanted. You're our teachers, that's what you are. You're our heroes. Of course we're gonna work with you. And so we got that done. And so they turned around and said, no, we would like to put other people on this board. So I, I disagreed with the party that I represent. And I told them, I am a nonpartisan. I'm on this board as a nonpartisan. So I don't follow their direction. I follow the direction of our students and our teachers, just like they do. And we did. So here's what I'm telling you. If you like what we have done, if you like the progress we have made over the last seven years, then I'm asking you to mobilize. I want you to do what we did on SOS Hernando, except I want you to make it SOSB. I want you to save our school board. I want you to get those two individuals, those great <coughs> board members who have been working so hard on your behalf. Susan, 50 years, 50 years in education. You think anybody could replace that? And, and a person like Kay that goes to all the schools and does things that I can't do, she gets out there and she just works with everyone in the school district and she's like a part of them. She intermingles. And Gus gets out in the community and does all this. And Linda has such a rapport with everyone and you hear her, she's so eloquent when she's up here, when she speaks, I mean, we can't help but listen to everything she says because everything she says makes so much damn sense. <laughs> right? And so I'm asking you, 
get out and mobilize. You teachers, do what you did at SOS. I want you to go out there and I want you to mobilize. I want you to get videos out there. I want you to make sure everybody's done. What did we do last time? If you have 10 members who are on your Facebook, then tell their members to ask their 10 members and their 10 members and their 10 members until we get this thing done. Voting starts tomorrow. If you want to complete what we're doing right now, then you're going to have to do this. And I'm going to give you the prediction why. If two board members take their position, this board will reverse. And what will happen to you is the half cent will not be voted on because those candidates said we don't need that half cent to repair our schools. That same couple of people who are running are also saying that, you know, we're in bad financial shape. Really? We got, we, we've got, listen, this is the crazy thing. We've had the best budget in seven years. We have reserves close to 9%. 3% is what the state requires. So when you listen to all this malarkey, are you going to take their word for it? Are you going to put some person in here who sat on this board before and then ask yourself, what did he do when he was here before? <laughs> Why didn't he do the things that are done now that we did for the last four years? Why would you elect that again? Oh, why? Because he's single-faceted. Critical race theory. I haven't seen one person that's come forward to tell me that we have critical race theory in our schools. We found it was removed within three hours. And we sit there, right? We sit there and listen to this BS. And it's an insult to my teachers. It's an insult to my teachers to sit there and accuse them. It infuriates me. And it should infuriate you. We're not New York and we're not California. We're Hernando County. Look at the record. The record speaks for itself. Get out there and mobilize and get our board members elected. I'm asking you, I'm begging you, and damn it, do it. I think the last request I'd like of you is to uh, say that you'll do my eulogy for me. <laughs> Gus, I'll probably be 110 by then. <laughs> Please close the meeting. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather you do it. You're my pro. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you all for coming out. This has been a meeting like we've never had before. <laughs> All drive safely. We're adjourned. Thank you.